Welcome back to part two of our series, Plants That Are Illegal to Grow in the United States. Part one popped off, and you all had a lot to say about the quality. So here's our best attempt at taking your critiques and making a more streamlined video. We appreciate all the feedback and hope this is more tolerable. The video really needs no introduction. Today we are going to discuss five more plant species that are technically illegal to grow in the United States. As always, check your local regulations as certain situations may allow the propagation of these plants. First up on the list is Brazilian pepper tree. The Brazilian pepper tree is a perennial shrub native to South America, specifically Brazil, Argentina, and Paraguay. This plant is recognizable by its dense, bushy growth habit, which can reach heights of 30 feet. The Brazilian pepper tree features dark green glossy leaves that are alternately arranged and pinnately compound. Small white flowers bloom in clusters during the fall, giving way to bright red berries that resemble peppercorns. The spice derived from the berries of the Brazilian pepper tree, often referred to as pink peppercorns, are not illegal in the United States. These berries are imported and used in culinary applications, particularly in gourmet cuisine. However, caution is advised because some individuals may have allergic reactions to the berries, especially those allergic to cashews or poison ivy, as they belong to the same family. While the spice itself is legally available, the cultivation and transport of the Brazilian pepper tree plant are restricted in many parts of the U.S. due to its invasive nature and potential ecological impact. Despite its appealing appearance and occasional use in spice production, the Brazilian pepper tree is highly invasive in regions outside its native range. In places like the southeastern United States, particularly Florida, it aggressively outcompetes native vegetation, disrupts ecosystems, and poses significant ecological threats. Consequently, it is illegal to grow or transport this plant in many areas due to its invasive nature and detrimental in environmental impact. So, despite its tasty peppercorns, the Brazilian pepper tree has to stay in Brazil. Number two on the list is Canada thistle. Canada thistle is a perennial herb native to southeastern Europe and the eastern Mediterranean region. Despite its name, it is not native to Canada, but has become widespread in North America, where it is considered a noxious weed. This thistle is characterized by its upright branched stems that can reach heights of up to five feet. The plant has deeply lobed, spiny leaves that are arranged alternately along the stem. During the summer, Canada thistle produces clusters of small, purple to pink flowers at the tips of the stems. These flowers give way to fluffy, wind-dispersed seeds that can spread over long distances. Canada. Thistle is highly adaptable and thrives in a variety of growing conditions, including pastures, roadsides, fields, and disturbed areas. It prefers well-drained soils and full sun, but can also tolerate partial shade. The plant spreads both by seed and through an extensive root system, making it particularly difficult to control. Its roots can extend several feet deep and horizontally, allowing it to quickly colonize large areas. While Canada thistle is not commonly used for culinary or medicinal purposes due to its invasive nature and spiny foliage, it does have some traditional uses. Historically, parts of the plant have been used in herbal medicine to treat various ailments. However, these uses are not widespread today, and the plant is primarily known for its negative impacts on agriculture and native ecosystems. Canada. Thistle competes aggressively with crops and native plants, reducing biodiversity and crop yields. As a result, it is subject to control measures and restrictions in many regions to prevent its spread and mitigate its impact on the environment. It is pretty though. Number three on our list today is truly unfortunate. Water hyacinth is a stunning plant with several remarkable qualities. This free-floating aquatic plant is native to the Amazon basin in South America. It's easily recognizable by its glossy, rounded leaves that can grow up to six inches wide and its striking lavender to pink flowers that bloom in dense clusters. The plant features a bulbous, spongy stem base that helps it float on water surfaces. Below the water, water hyacinth has long, feathery roots that provide excellent habitat for small aquatic creatures. Water hyacinth thrives in tropical and subtropical climates and can be found in various freshwater habitats, including lakes, ponds, rivers, and canals. It prefers nutrient-rich, still, or slow-moving waters. The plant reproduces rapidly, both vegetatively and by seed, 
forming dense mats that can quickly cover large water surfaces. These mats can impede water flow, block sunlight from reaching submerged plants, deplete oxygen levels in the water, and disrupt aquatic ecosystems. Despite its invasive nature, water hyacinth has beneficial uses. In some parts of the world, it is harvested for compost, animal fodder, and even biofuel production. Additionally, its roots can absorb heavy metals and other pollutants from the water, making it useful in water purification. The stunning water hyacinth is illegal in many places, including Alabama, Arkansas, Arizona, Delaware, Louisiana, Florida, Idaho, the city of Chicago, Mississippi, South Carolina, Wisconsin, Texas, Nebraska, and Puerto Rico. In Florida, it's illegal to possess, cultivate, introduce, collect, or transport water hyacinth without a permit due to its aggressive growth rate. In Texas, it's illegal to possess or transport water hyacinth, and sightings can be reported to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Coming in at number four is Russian olive. Russian olive is a deciduous shrub or small tree native to southeastern Europe and western Asia. This hardy plant can reach heights of up to 20 feet and is known for its silvery green lance-shaped leaves, which give it a distinctive appearance. The branches are often adorned with thorns, adding to its rugged charm. In late spring to early summer, Russian olive produces small, fragrant, yellowish flowers that later develop into olive-like fruits with a silvery sheen. They are small, olive-like droops with a sweet but somewhat astringent taste. In some cultures, these fruits have been used in traditional medicine and can be consumed fresh or dried. However, they are not commonly eaten in modern cuisine due to their mealy texture and the presence of a large seed inside. Russian olive is highly adaptable and can thrive in a variety of growing conditions, making it both a resilient and invasive species. It prefers full sun and well-drained soils, but can tolerate poor soil conditions, drought, and high salinity. This ability to grow in challenging environments has led to its widespread use in landscaping for erosion controller, windbreaks, and as a decorative plant. However, its aggressive growth and ability to outcompete native plants have made it a problematic invasive species in many regions, particularly in the western United States. Despite its invasive nature, Russian olive has some practical uses. The fruits are edible and have been used in traditional medicine for their antioxidant properties. The dense foliage and thorny branches also provide excellent habitat and protection for wildlife. However, due to its tendency to dominate and disrupt native ecosystems, efforts are often made to control and eradicate Russian olive in areas where it poses a significant threat to biodiversity. And last but not least, number five, garlic mustard. Garlic mustard is a biennial herb native to Europe and parts of Asia. It is easily recognizable by its heart-shaped tooth leaves and small, white, four-petaled flowers that bloom in the spring. The plant emits a distinct garlic odor when its leaves are crushed, which is how it got its name. In its first year, garlic mustard forms a low rosette of leaves that stay close to the ground. In its second year, it sends up flowering stalks that can reach up to three feet in height. Garlic mustard thrives in a variety of growing conditions, making it highly adaptable and invasive. It prefers shaded areas such as forests, woodland edges, and along streams, but can also grow in sunny spots. It is particularly troublesome in North America, where it was introduced in the 19th century for culinary and medicinal purposes. The plant spreads aggressively, outcompeting native flora by releasing allelopathic chemicals that inhibit the growth of other plants and mycorrhizal fungi that native plants depend on. Despite its invasive nature, garlic mustard has some uses. The leaves, flowers, and seeds are all edible and can be used in salads, pesto, and other culinary dishes, imparting a mild garlic flavor. Historically, it has been used in herbal medicine to treat various ailments, including respiratory issues and digestive problems. However, due to its ecological impact, efforts are underway to control and eradicate garlic mustard in many regions to protect native plant communities and maintain biodiversity. Garlic mustard is not typically imported for culinary uses. Although it was initially brought to North America by early settlers for its culinary and medicinal properties, its invasive nature has led to it being considered more of an ecological threat than a beneficial plant. Keep in mind, garlic mustard is not cultivated or imported specifically for culinary purposes. 
Instead, it has spread widely on its own and is often found growing in the wild. Efforts are focused on controlling and eradicating it due to its negative impact on native ecosystems. However, foragers and some enthusiasts may still use it for culinary purposes, but this is done locally by harvesting it from the wild rather than through importation or commercial cultivation. Being aware of plants that are illegal to grow is crucial for several reasons. Firstly, many of these plants are invasive species that can outcompete native flora, disrupt local ecosystems, and cause significant ecological harm. By understanding which plants are prohibited, you help protect biodiversity and maintain healthy ecosystems. Additionally, growing illegal plants can result in legal consequences, including fines and penalties. Awareness ensures that you comply with local, state, and federal regulations, avoiding potential legal issues. Invasive plants can negatively impact agriculture by competing with crops for resources, spreading diseases, and attracting pests. Knowing which plants are illegal helps prevent agricultural damage and supports sustainable farming practices. Furthermore, controlling and eradicating invasive species requires significant resources, including time, money, and labor. Preventing the spread of illegal plants reduces the burden on resource management agencies and helps allocate resources more efficiently. Some prohibited plants can pose direct health risks to humans and animals, either through toxicity or by creating environments conducive to pests and pathogens. Being aware of these plants helps protect public health and safety. For gardeners and landscapers, knowing which plants are illegal ensures that your gardening practices are environmentally responsible and legally compliant. It helps you make informed decisions about what to plant and how to manage your garden. Overall, awareness of illegal plants promotes environmental stewardship, legal adherence, and responsible gardening practices, contributing to the well-being of both natural and human communities. We hope you enjoyed part two of our series, Illegal Plants. For more gardening info, tips, and tricks, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, happy gardening.